Welcome to Paranormal Palace Radio, where truth equals reality, and truth is often stranger than fiction. Hello everyone, welcome to Paranormal Palace Radio. This is your host, Royce the Redneck Radio Man, and joining me today is going to be William Von Hulse, and he's here on behalf of of Emery uh, Valian, if I got the pronunciation correct, and he's going to be that is okay. He's going to be talking about Emery's new book, um, the most recent one in his series. Uh, the past one was Planetary Transformation. Uh, the new one is the Planetary, the new Planetary Reality, and uh, we'll probably come back later uh, next year sometime for the third book in the series. But we'll we'll only brief you on that one today. At any rate, we're going to talk about his new book and about avatars, and, you know, this is a new thing for me. I mean, for example, I've ne- never heard him called avatars. I heard him called avatars, which I don't think, I think most people know they're probably one and the same. Uh, but this is William's second time to the show. I really enjoyed him the first time, and I think it's going to be a great show today. So without further ado, let's get on to uh, William. Uh, William, how are you doing today? Very good, thank you. Well, William, I was just going to say, to start us out real quick before we get to the questions, why don't you uh, tell everybody a little something about uh, you and Emery and the book to kind of break the ice, get everybody an uh, idea of where we're at. What Emery is focusing on and has been for a couple of years is that there's a new frequency, a new energy that's really coming into the planet. And what he's working on is to help as many people as possible understand what's happening on the planet today, why there's so much chaos, why there's so much disagreement among people, why there is so much violence violence on the planet, and... What, he, what he's wanting to do is that if people really understand why all these things are happening, then they can take a deep breath and relax and understand that it's part of a, a, a greater whole or a greater um, unfoldment of energy on the planet today. Okay. Now, this energy that you're referring to, and this isn't one of the questions we uh, had on the list, but it's one that's been... On my curiosity, I was planning to ask you, could it be the same memory that, um, Emery, slap me silly, but can it be the same energy that was referred to in the, um, Old Testament in Amos, I think it was, when he said, I shall, uh, in those days I shall pour out my spirit, in other words. And he is, yes, absolutely. And what is happening today is that the, the divine itself, is pouring out his spirit and he's pouring out his spirit in spades and we on the planet are feeling that every single person somewhere within is feeling something changing most of us don't really understand why most of us could um, respond in ways that we don't understand we could get confused we can get overloaded we could get agitated we could get angry we could get depressed. And what Emery is saying is that it's an absolutely magnificent time to be alive because this outpouring of the Spirit will become more and more truly visible, not just something you can sense on the inner levels, but will become more and more visible on the outer plane. We will be witnessing the Spirit from the Divine itself manifesting on the planet. Like there will be, what, more psychics, more healers, etc.? Well, that's part of it, too, but even in a very simple way that the if you look up into the heaven or you look up into the sky and you see clouds, which we see all the time, and if you kind of tune in to, to some of these clouds and some of these things that are happening, what you will actually begin to... to witness or experience is that there, the, the energy is becoming visible. I was with, new, with um, Emery this last January in New Zealand, 
I was on a retreat with him for two weeks, and we were to go into our normal 7 o'clock evening chanting session, and I looked out over the, the hills, and I saw a red rainbow. The, there were not seven colors in this rainbow. The rainbow itself was red, and it, you know, it just, it just something triggered inside of me that something's happening. Why is a rainbow red? I don't know. But, but what's happening is that look to the, to, to the heavens. Look to what's happening. There's an incredible energy that's coming down and it's becoming visibly manifesting. It's right. Okay. And, you know, I know I've seen some similar things to what you're describing, but before we move on to any other questions, I want to mention to everybody listening that if y'all want to call in and ask questions, the number is 832. 832- 632-7904. And for those of you listening at, say, YouTube or um, iTunes or somewhere else, the site here is www.paranormalpalace.com. And we've got a chat room here open. We'd love to have you come join us in the chat room. If you want to learn more about the book, you can go to warwickandassociates.com and look in their campaigns and uh It'll give you a link to the book. I look for a new planetary reality. You can also click on the link on the show description right under William's picture here on the front page as well. And, William, i got to ask you real quick, like, do you or Emery either one have your own website? We Emery does have a website, and it's planetary-transformation.org, O-R-G. Okay. If you want to know more about Emery, you can... Go to that website, and there's also a website if you want to order the books, and that website is soundinglight.com. Okay, and I'm going to do my best to remember to add that to the archives when I move it to the archives, which I will be sending you links to the archives. So this show is going to be out there for prosperity, so to speak. Um, now, moving back on to the regular questions, however, um, what's going to I think it would be a good idea to tell everybody listening exactly who Emery is. Emery is a very normal person on the outside. He turned 72 this year. He was born in war Budapest in 1940. In 1956, he became a refugee because he crossed the border from Hungary into um, Austria, and he ended up in New Zealand. But what makes Emery so unique is that from a very small age, two and three, he was able to explore the inner dimensions. And it's wonderful to hear him talk about it because he can talk about it as a young boy at three years of age. He's lying in bed and he's going into these inner dimensions and sometimes they terrified him and he came back out and then he kind of gathered his courage up again and went back into these inner dimensions and explored them. So what he's done his whole life is that he's explored the inner dimensions themselves. So all his teachings come from his own experience of these inner dimensions. So everything that he that he's teaching us is because he he himself has experienced all these inner dimensions, and there's multiple dimensions beyond this physical plane. And so his his teaching comes from those dimensions themselves. Because in those worlds or those dimensions, there's you, when you experience them, you have a very different understanding of what it's like to be a human being, what we're truly about, what our potential is within, and then you're able to help other people explore those dimensions as well. Okay, that sounds very fascinating. And I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, teaching out there that, you know, deals with the actual uh, exploration of yourself and getting to know yourself and, you know, the inner dimensions, uh, conscious, subconscious, some people would call it. Um, But, you know, basically, it's a well-known, you know, concept, in other words. And what Emory is saying, and it's, it's, it's really good if you understand this, but we, on the physical plane, live essentially on the skin, the very outermost layer itself, the skin of an incredible divine being. So our whole physical world, everything that we see, everything that we do, is really on the outermost skin. 
So when Emery is exploring these inner dimensions, what he's actually doing is he's going past this layer of the skin, going into, of course, the dream world. He refers to the astral plane. That could even re- be referred to as a flesh, you know, the layer beneath the skin of this divine being. But Emery has been able to go even deeper than the flesh. He's actually really moved into the deeper levels of this divine being itself, meaning that Emery has explored the the inner organs of this divine being or the bone structure of the divine being or the you know the heart itself of the divine being or the you know the brain itself of this incredible divine being so when he's when he's teaching it all he's bringing those incredible understandings from the the inner dimensions and there's multiple multiple dimensions he's bringing that to us on the very skin where we live on the physical plane and helping us make that journey inward. Okay. Now, one of the things we're going to talk about here is you have worked exclusively with Emory for 26 years. Why and how has that been for you? I have had teachers prior to Emory. As I said, some were famous, some not famous. And what always had happened was that within a couple of years, I had felt that I'd reached the end of their knowledge field and that I knew I needed to move on. And I met Emory 26 years ago on a retreat up in Salmon Arm in Canada. And from the very beginning, I could sense that there was no limit, there was no end of his knowledge field. And I have been with him exclusively for 26 years, and I'm still astounded at how much I still have to learn, how much how much there, there is no end to his, to, to his understanding, to his knowledge field. It's infinite. So for me, the, the experience is infinite. Okay. Now, I was going to ask you to explain his teachings and how he knows what he knows, but you were pretty well already doing that one a minute ago. So would you like to add anything else to what you were saying about his teachings and, you know, what he knows what he knows, or do you think feel like you've already covered that? Well, I think, the, you know, I'll just say very quickly, what, what Emory has, and, and all true teachers have this, they have a huge energy field that they've connected to. It's very much like the analogy of the Star Wars and the Force. So Emory is like the, the Master Yodi, who is this kind of mysterious creature, but this, but this little kind of creature is connected to this huge universal force. So for anyone... Coming into that, all the, the teaching is how to help, like Luke Skywalker in the very beginning, questions and getting stuck up and stumbled with things. You know, the little Yodi, Master Yodi, helped him through to understand who, he, who Mas, Luke, um, Luke Skywalker truly is. So it's the same thing with Emery. He's connected to the Force. That Force is within him. The Emery is, is part of that energy field, that Force field. So any time that you begin working with with his teachings, reading his book, um, listening to someone talk about it, what's happening is that you're also beginning to touch upon that force field itself. And you, when you touch upon that force field, the force field itself will teach you. So it's an incredibly beautiful mm-hmm. connection possible of so many different kinds of, of people mm-hmm. being able to connect to that, that infinite force field itself. Now, this infinite force field you're referring to, and if you don't mind me straying from the uh, question list again, uh, some of this stuff, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm the kind of person that I have my own questions about everything all the time, but um, would this be the same thing that um, has been known to be called the Buddha, the Christ, uh, avatars, uh, and other names as well, but we're talking about the same uh, basic energy field? We are talking about the same energy field, and every every culture puts their own label on this force field. You know, Christianity referred refers to it as Christ, and refers to you know, my father, my father, and I are one. You know, Buddha, same thing. They they had a vocabulary language, but what they're referring to is that the, the the innermost teaching is that there is this incredible force field. A consciousness itself, a divine consciousness, a consciousness of unity. So, 
So what Emery is focusing on this book, The New Planetary Reality, and the subtitle is The Coming Avatara and the Nine Paths to Enlightenment. What he's saying is that this force field is becoming very present on the planet today, this avatara, this, this incredible cosmic being is beginning to focus itself on the physical earth itself. And that avatara is connected to every single avatara that has been on this earth in the past. So our previous avatars have been the Buddha, the Christ, Mohammed, Quan Xing Ying, Lao Tzu, Moses, um, pharaohs in ancient Egypt, um, you know, even teachers all the way back to Atlantis. These, these teachers from the inner levels have come to the earth to a very particular time, a very particular place, a very particular culture, and a very particular people. And these avatars have incarnated in the flesh. Christ, you know, incarnated. He was a, a human being. Buddha was a human being. Um, Kuan Yin was a, was a very beautiful feminine expression of this energy as a woman in China long ago. So, all of these avatars all come from the same place. They're all part of that unity consciousness or the, the um, field, that force field. Now, what's happening today, and this is very unique because it's never happened on the planet before, is that the avatara, this coming avatara, is not coming to a particular place, a particular person, or a particular culture. It's, this avatara is not itself incarnating into a human being. This avatar is something completely different. It's actually, and it sounds so science fiction, and people may, you know, it will stretch their minds a bit if you understand what's really happening. But this avatar is not of the earth itself. It has come from a place outside of the planet earth. So it has chosen through a divine plan, through a mission, because planet earth is in crisis, because we are bordering on moving into a credible, nightmarish, dark, science fiction kind of life, or we could possibly move into an incredible golden age. So right now on the planet, we're in a very, very critical window of opportunity. So Emery refers to, we have this 20-year window of opportunity, and roughly we are in the first two or three years of that window of opportunity. So for the next 18 years or so, we have humanity has an enormous choice before them. Do we get stuck in the status quo? Do we get stuck in dictatorship? Do we get stuck in people's agenda, wanting to rule others and to hurt others and to be violent and to you know, show their, their will by, by destruction? Or do will humans decide to to move into a new direction, move into an energy that is really based on true love itself, an energy that embraces everything, an energy that's not afraid of differences, an energy that doesn't kill someone because they have a different belief than they do. So we're really bordering, we're teetering on these two possibilities, these two um, futures for, for mankind. And so what is also happening is that this avatara is able to surround the earth in, I will refer to it as he, you could say he, she, or it, it doesn't, gender doesn't really matter, but this, this consciousness of the avatara itself is able to completely embrace planet earth, all seven billion people on the planet, is able to embrace the three billion that are waiting to incarnate, so there's 10 billion human souls, the family, the human species, are one family, 10 billion, is able to embrace every single person simultaneously and is able to help in miraculous ways when any single individual, man, woman, child, has that moment of awakening or that moment of when they're teetering between those two different scenarios that Avatara can help them move into the direction of opening the, the direction of, of helping others, the direction of um, you know, embracing the new instead of, instead of getting stuck in the past. So there's an enormous, as I said before in the planetary transformation, there's enormous energy coming into the planet and there's an enormous crisis that we're in 
and incredible miracles that are going to happen as well. Okay. Now, I was going to ask you about uh, his new book, the title of The New Planetary Reality, The Coming Avatar and the Nine Gates to Enlightenment, and ask you to explain what you've been pretty well explaining the parts about the uh, coming avatar. So why don't you talk to us real quick like about the nine gates to enlightenment? Now what what this means mm. is that the the avatara is like a a president of the United States or a, a CEO. And there's lots of things that has to be done and of course a president or a CEO can't do everything themselves. They can steer things but but they need an enormous amount of help from many, many people. No one person can accomplish anything, you know, of huge differences all by themselves. So the, the avatar is very much like that. So what the avatar is doing is waiting very patiently for people to wake up. And when people begin to wake up in their consciousness, then the avatar is able to help them. And this doesn't mean necessarily that you have to totally be spiritual and focus in some kind of spiritual tradition and be devout and all that kind of thing. <laughs> What's so mysterious about the avatar is that it can also help a scientist. It can help uh, an economic um, professor. It could help um, a politician. It could help someone um, in the music fields or artistic fields. It, it, it's not limited to just someone who's spiritually focused. It can help any single person on this planet who's moving into the new direction. And so that You know, it's, this is a every avatar in the past has always been kind of focused on a, a spiritual, you know, almost you could say limitation. But this avatar is is so vast in its consciousness and so able, so um, flexible in in its understanding that it's able to help any single person. So what Emery is saying is that we have ways that we can raise our frequency the ways that we raise our vibration. When we raise our vibration, then we're able to connect with this avatar. So he has given nine examples, nine paths. He refers to it as enlightenment. It just basically it means how to open up your consciousness, how to open up your energy field, how to open up your auric field around you so that you can begin to experience these incredible energies from the avatar himself. And the nine paths, each of them focus on a particular way. And as he said, that everyone in the past, I mean, everyone in the human um, history who has become enlightened has done it in one of nine different ways. And some of these ways are working with sound. Some of the ways are working with light. Some of the ways are working with breath. Some of them are working as a spiritual warrior, which means that you're, you are totally grounded in your body and you're able to, to move as a spiritual warrior and connect with, with, with the energies of the greater. Uh, some of these paths focus on visualization, so that you put an image in front of you, a mandala, some kind of sacred image, and then your subconscious mind can absorb that and direct you To become that, so there are all different kinds of ways, and everyone's different. And there's many, many people have combinations of different ways of of feeling the light, or seeing the light, feeling the energy, hearing the sounds. So, what his nine paths are, um, he goes into detail about each, in how each one of the paths are different, and how you can follow one or many. And these are all detailed very neatly inside of the book, right? And there's also, um, in a few of the chapters, there's actually a reference to how to pronounce a mantra, because, of course, mantras and sound are very, very important. So um, if, you, if you buy the book, you can look on a certain page, and there's um, help for the warrior mantra. There's help mm -hmm. for a mantra to help open up the third eye. There's a mantra to help open up the heart chakra. You can go on that website that we mentioned before, the planetary transformation.org, and you can listen to how Emery intones those mantras, and that will really empower you to connect to that energy. Okay. Now, you've already covered what a true avatar is. So, um, 
Now, I think I heard you a minute ago you were talking about what the different avatars were, you know, focused on. And you've also talked about how the new avatar is different. So you've been doing a good job of getting ahead of me here, uh, <laughs> covering all of this, which that's pretty good. And, okay, Emery says we're in the midst of revelations, which you were kind of briefly touching on that a few minutes ago. But would you like to extrapolate on that a little bit further? Absolutely. And, uh, well, just, this is, uh, interviews on October, mid-October of 2012. Um, December, uh, 21st of 2012 is a couple months away. And as Emery said, that the whole 2012, December 21st is going to be a big old flop. Meaning that the day after is going to look the same as the day before. What, what he's saying though, is that we are in the midst of revelations. What the Bible 2,000 years ago had had um, had written in Revelations and other um, prophets at that time also spoke about it, that we are really coming to, to that manifestation of that incredible battle here on the planet and it's happening today. So what is happening is that we see an increase in violence, we see an increase of, of tension, we see an increase of confusion, we see all kinds of, of ways people are interpreting what is happening, but at the same time, there's also an incredible energy that is being lowered down from the inner dimensions, so that there is this light on the inner dimensions, and it's lowering its frequency and as Emery said year by year month by month week by week day by day hour by hour minute by minute that energy is becoming more and more present more and more obvious more and more accessible to here on to us here on the physical plane to normal human beings so what this means is that each each person on the planet today is going to come across a, a moment of revelation a moment of, of something happening completely out of the ordinary, some, you know, something on the, on the back of your neck kind of gives you this feeling to go left instead of right, and you, you obey that kind of feeling on the back of your neck, and a few seconds away, on the other direction, there's a hideous automobile accident. Or there's, there's all kinds of things that are happening that are hard to explain. And that's going to happen more and more. Because what's happening is that we, the human race, we are the prize. There are huge battles that are going on in heaven, and these battles are raging. There are forces of light, there are forces of darkness, and they are, are raging for the prize, and the prize is the human race. And because of that, this this incredible otherworldly, and you could almost say it's the ultimate alien, this cosmic avatar has come into into our plane of existence, has come into our lives, and is here to help, and is has powers that are incomprehensible to, to all of us. Sort of like the power of creation itself. It is. It is the 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 most um, kind of divine expression of the creator himself. It is like his lieutenant or his. I mean, in way, not to be disrespectful of a Christ or a Buddha or a Kuan Yin, but this avatar, this coming avatar, is way way beyond in, in its power and its its cosmic conscious energy field than our Christ or our, or the Buddha or Kuan Yin. So it it is. Um, it, it, it doesn't happen very often in any planetary history. This, it has never happened in the planet before. It is a very unique time, and it's happening mm-hmm. now. It may not happen in the future. There, it's, you know, there's many factors that, are, that are, are present today because this is the time that it's happening. It will happen, as Emery said, for the next the 20 year. There's a 20 year critical period, but the Zavatara is really focused on the next 300 years and the next 1,000 years. 
So I take up where we were at. Do you remember where you were at, or do you like me to move to the next question? Uh, why don't you move to the next question? Okay. In the new book, The New Planetary Reality, on page 14, Emery quotes Matthew. When uh, the Christ comes, he will come with his masters and his angels. Could you explain why that is relevant today? I will explain, and it's very beautiful. And uh, to give a little history, um, that was something that Matthew wrote, one of the disciples of Christ. And what he's referring to is the, the, we would say today, the second coming of the Christ. And what the Middle Ages and the European consciousness um, had interpreted that was that Christ, like in Michelangelo, Sistine Chapel, he's coming in the clouds, he's a huge figure, he has angels all around him, and he's coming as the last judgment. And, of course, that's how the, the mind 400 years ago interpreted that. But today, there's a completely different understanding of what this means, and it's a much deeper level, and it's all connected to the avatar or the descent of the avatar itself. And what Emery's referring to and why he's quoting this is that when the Christ comes, he comes with his masters and his angels. Now, you could think of Christ as we all have thought of some reincarnation of the Christ itself. Well, that, that's not what is really the, the deeper level of this text. But the deeper level of this text is that when more, more and more people on the planet when they begin to open their heart chakra and they begin to, begin to connect to that inner energy of the Christ itself or that um, there's other traditions which refer to it as a spirit spark atom. So every person on this planet, all seven billion of us, the worst dictators you can ever imagine, have a spark of the Christ itself or the spirit spark atom buried within their heart. So when more and more people begin to connect to that incredible mystery of the heart itself, then the Christ or that love, cosmic love energy which Christ brought, which is coming back today, that individual is radiating that cosmic love and the masters and the angels are able on the inner levels to help that person. So when a single person or many people begin to connect to their inner heart, they are bringing the Christ, that cosmic um, love energy, into the planet, 2012, and they also are have an enormous embrace of the spiritual teachers, of the angels, and of the avatar itself. So this is an incredible new understanding of, of, of an ancient text. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm showing that we got 12 minutes remaining, and I don't think we're going to have time to get all the questions in during that 12 minutes, and I realize uh, you have to go to work today, so why don't you give us a summary and highlight some of the most important parts of the book, and then if you want to, uh, we can reschedule this for a date in, say, November or December to come back and finish, you know, what we got interrupted on due to the uh, brownout. I would be happy to come back, absolutely. So uh, you want to give us kind of a summary of uh, some of the important stuff that you wanted to cover that we may not have covered uh, up to this point? Well, the important thing to understand is that every single person on this planet is facing a crisis. And another way of saying it is that they're in their own Armageddon. And what this means is that we always think Armageddon is this huge kind of battle of, of these forces and it's not connected to us individually. But what is happening is that every person today is having an Armageddon within, meaning that they are struggling with these forces within their own life. So I know many people are struggling with paying bills, many people are struggling with health issues, um, struggling with how to provide for the children, how to, to get through the day, how to you know, just survive on the planet. And it's getting tough. And 
what is important to understand is that the reason that it's tough is not because something you've done wrong, but it's because there's incredible energies from many, many levels coming into the planet today. As I said in the planetary transformation, we're moving out of that Piscean energy, we're moving into Aquarian energy, which mankind has done every 26,000 years, so that's not a big deal. But what is also happening is that we're moving out of a sleepy part of the galaxy into a very dynamic part of the galaxy. And we're actually getting um, bombarded from the center of our, of our own galaxy. This energy is coming towards us. That's affecting us as well. So that's making our individual Armageddon more intense. But mostly what is happening is that there's energies that are coming from the inner dimensions as well, and they're getting stepped down. So what is happening is that we are just on the surface of beginning to experience on the physical plane these new energies that are getting stepped down from these inner dimensions. These are energies of light. These are energies of sound. We will more and more begin to experience, witness the light itself. More and more people will begin to witness the incredible divine sound itself. You know, I mentioned earlier about the the angelic forces, they, the angelic forces are like our sisters. Emery said that we actually have a covenant with the angelic forces from the very beginning. We, humanity, are the brothers. So our, we are one family, the brothers and sisters, the human kingdom and the angelic kingdom. We are tied together. They are here to help us. They are always trying to help us. And what's happening now is that they can help us more and more because people are beginning to change the vibration. People are beginning to open up to the possibility that these invisible workers and many, many, many dimensions of invisible workers are actually helping us. So there's, it's an incredibly beautiful time to live. As Emery said, you're very lucky to be alive today. You're very lucky that you've incarnated, that you are asking questions, that you're conscious of the spiritual path, you're conscious of those enormous changes that are happening. And as Emery's mission has been for many, many years is to help as many people as possible just understanding what's happening on the planet today, help individuals in their own Mar- Armageddon, and make a difference. Right. Um, now, I know there's been a lot of talk about this here coming in, you know, um, One of the things that a person might ask is if this is tied in with the uh, Mayan prophecy in some way. Well, the Mayan prophecy, every interprets this as the Mayan prophecy is essentially the end of one kind of calendar system. And it's not the end. It's basically another calendar system will open up. So, and there's many, many other traditions that, you know, the Hopi and all kinds of other traditions have this, this sense of, of some kind of finality. And what, what they have been referring to or what they're, they're focusing on is that we're in a critical time. And the critical time is now. And in one day it's not going to end. But there are many energies coming in that will make an enormous difference how it all plays out. So what's the most important thing is that people go within, that they really begin to understand who they are, what they can do to make a difference, really begin to understand how they can help what's happening on the planet, how they can begin to connect to their own soul, how they can really work with these invisible forces and let these invisible forces really work through them. I mean, in a true way, not so much channeling and, and having, you know, entities from, from the astral plane speak through them, but really being able to mm-hmm. to embody these incredible divine energies that are coming into our planet. Okay. Well, I show we got like six minutes remaining. Did you have any last-minute thoughts? Well, besides our interruption of the, uh, your brownout. <laughs> yeah, I do apologize for that. I, unfortunately, 
we can't do much with the light company. <laughs> but I wish well, I had, I had a backup inter- battery. Uh, go ahead. Another interview the other day, and the same thing happened. It just blacked out, so I don't know what's going on. But um, we we'll talk about energy. <laughs> Yeah, no. Are there any questions that have come up? Uh, no, nothing's come up in the chat room uh, exactly about the um, book or your, what you're talking about. Uh, one, uh, some of the people haven't even come back since the brownout. Uh, people in there are saying that they can get into chat, but they can't get the player to work. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to end up catching the last part in the archives, and that might be why questions haven't been asked is when the brownout occurred. Something else might have happened at the same time, or maybe it's because I didn't totally restart my whole entire, you know, laptop when I restarted it, and maybe I should have. I just, the minute I got my signal back, just pulled everything back up, in other words. Well, yeah, there's definitely some interference, then, you could say. What I do want to mention briefly is that Emery is also, in fact, at this very moment, working on a new book, and the new book is called The New Heaven and the new earth. And what he's doing in this book is giving very specific um, analysis or interpretations or directions of of how this new energy will manifest. So he talks about the new kind of economy that will happen on the planet. He talks about um, the new kind of um, medicine that will happen on the planet, the new kind of healing, the new kind of um, psychiatric help, the new kind of political systems that will be on the planet. And it's, it's a really um, beautiful vision of, what, of where mankind um, could be going. So it's very inspiring and it's very liberating because I know many people are, are really struggling at the moment. There's a lot of things that are happening all over the world, the Middle East, um, you know, the politics in, in America, the fiscal cliff, um, the Euro. I mean, we have so many things going on on this planet that seem to, to bring up a lot of fear in people. And this is, as Emery said, this is all normal. It's all part of, of these clashes of energies that we're on at the moment. And what helps is to really have a vision of the future, to really know where mankind is directed to go, what the true human being should be like, what the new earth should truly be like. And when you have that vision then you can get through the darkness. Then you can get through the difficulties and the crises and the, the earthquakes and the storms and, and all the, the political chaos and the economic chaos. Because it really, um, you know, if a, if a people don't have a vision, they can endure anything. But if they have that vision, they can endure everything. Right. And that's very, you know, good information to think about. Because I think a lot of it does boil down to faith. Faith is very important, and also just to really just to believe in something that that um, will make a difference. You know, to have that power within to make a difference that has enormous implications at many levels. All righty. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call this show a wrap. I show that it's like 1:58, and uh, we were going to wrap it at two anyway, and we're going to need to do a reschedule to account uh, for the uh, brownout. But I want to tell you, it's been a pleasure having you. You're very informed guest. You're a very interesting guest, and you c- you're covering a lot of material that I think a lot of people need to know about, and I want to apologize one more time for that brownout, and I do have your, you know, contact info, and tomorrow, the next day, I'll be in touch about scheduling you to, you know, finish doing what we, you know, left off at. Um, I want to thank you for coming, and I'll be in touch. Well, and thank you so much for having me. Okay. You have a good day. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming, everybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Remember, I couldn't have a show with you anymore than have one without a guest. Uh, it takes all parties to make everything work. I hope you all enjoy your weekend. Don't do anything I wouldn't do during the rest of it. And we'll be back on the air again Tuesday. And once again, Tuesday's guest is going to be Sean Blackwell. And we're going to be talking about Am I Bipolar or Waking Up? Uh, This is about whether or not people who are bipolar or schizophrenic 
are really uh, really have a disorder, or are they uh, just in the process of a spiritual awakening? And he's um, somebody who has been diagnosed with bipolar and uh, maybe schizophrenia. I'm not sure. Sometimes I do get to both. I uh, didn't get that far into his material. I got a ways in, though. So we're going to hear it from his perspective this time rather than the psychologist's perspective. And until then, bye-bye and take care. <laughs> 